Well, thank you everyone for being here for the Pleasant Grove City Council debate tonight. Uh, I am Mayor Jenny Reese of Cedar Hills and I appreciate the invitation to participate in this event. We are going to start with a pledge and then we will have the national anthem which will be sung by Courtney Varney. So if the audience will please rise and repeat the pledge with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Courtney, that was beautiful. All right, candidates, here's how we're gonna do this tonight. We are going to start by having each candidate give an opening statement, which will have two minutes. After that, I have a series of questions that have been submitted to me from Pleasant Grove residents, and we will get through as many of those questions that we can up until eight o'clock, and each of you will have a minute and a half to answer those questions. At eight o'clock, we'll finish with the questions and move into closing statements and give each of you two minutes for closing statements. Christy here in the front row is your timer and she will be holding up the cards, letting you know how much time you have left. So please watch her, but I will also watch uh, the clock as well and let you know if we're going over. So we, and we will start 
uh, with Eric, move our way down, and then as we ask each question, we'll go to the next candidate, so each of you has an opportunity to go first. So starting with two minutes, uh, Eric. So my, my opening statement would be is, I'm running for city council again, is because, and you're gonna hear this all night long, is I love Pleasant Grove. When I drive through Pleasant Grove in the mornings, the evenings, and see what everything that's been accomplished, what we're able to do in the city, from new parks, to roads being worked on, to new public safety buildings, to wonderful things in our arts, our historic committee, our beautification committees, everything, we're moving forward as a city. And I want to continue being part of, the, of, of this great city and continue making great things happen in our city. And that's why I love, love living in Pleasant Grove. My wife and I have lived here for over 29 years. We have uh, three children, they're proud Pleasant Grove uh, graduates, and we've loved every minute that, we have, that we've lived here in Pleasant Grove. And that's why I'm running for city council, is my wife hates me telling the story, but one day we were driving on Main Street, and I, a long time ago, and I, I used to complain a lot about what was going on in Pleasant Grove. And she made me pull the car over and said, what are you doing? And what do you mean? What am I doing? I'm, I'm, I'm wanting things done in Pleasant Grove. She need, you need to stop complaining and, stop, and start volunteering. And so I volunteered. I was not only our neighborhood chair for Little Denmark, I volunteered to be on our downtown advisor board, and that kind of started my process of volunteering in the city. And I've just appreciated every moment I've had working with citizens and the community and seeing great things happen in Pleasant Grove, and that's why I'm running for Pleasant Grove City Council again. Thank you. Hi, my name is Dustin Phillips. For those of you who haven't had a chance to meet me yet, uh, I may be a little bit different than uh, uh, many of you. I didn't grow up in Pleasant Grove, um, wasn't raised necessarily in, in Utah. Uh, I've lived from coast to coast. Uh, I've lived in the Midwest. I've lived in the north, uh, uh, Northwest, went to college in California, uh, lived for six years in South America. Um, I've seen a lot of different places and, and, and seen cultures uh, and been able to uh, become a part of so many different um, types of cultures and, and appreciated each one. Uh, I've lived in Pleasant Grove longer than anywhere. I've been here for 12 years now. And ever since coming here, I have had the opportunity to serve in different opportunities uh, with the library board, uh, the Board of Adjustments, and, and most recently the Planning Commission. And, and just as Eric said, volunteering and participating is, is where you, you gain appreciation for all those that, that do amazing things. My background is, is such that I think I'm in a great position to help continue uh, Pleasant Grove on the, on the road of growth, development, with the financial um, prudence that, that it needs. We need someone who has a, a deep financial background to really assess what the needs of the city are and the best way to, to use the, the growing resources that we have. So I'm looking forward to taking the opportunity to getting to know uh, the city from a city council standpoint and to be able to help make those decisions and, and influence the city in a way because I deeply believe that you have the greatest opportunity for impact in our city at the local community level. And that's why I'm looking to, to represent you on the city council. Thank you. Well, so this is my least favorite part, just so you know. <laughs> I'm Carrie Hammond. I'm a candidate for city council. I've been a resident, um, my, my husband, my, my boys and I have residents here for 11 years. Um, we actually live in a property that was his grandfather's, so they were here for a good long time before that. Um, long time Pleasant Grove family. Um, we're experiencing actually where we are, kind of getting um, boxed in a little bit. And I see a need um, with the growth that we have coming to Pleasant Grove City for um, residents and commercialism to be able to coexist peacefully. Um, and I think that there are ways to do that. Um, I think it takes cool heads. I think it takes prioritizing. I think it takes listening to residents, most of all. Um, and so that's probably one of my pet things. Um, 
I also see some big concerns where I think that um, maybe some more prioritizing needs to happen. I think that um, the city is, has come a long way um, from where we started, from where I started with it anyway, <laughs> 11 years ago. Boy, it's changed a lot. Um, I think cool heads, common sense, a sense of congeniality, um, and an ability to work together and, and respect the diversity um, that we're seeing in Pleasant Grove are necessary qualities for a council person, and I hope you vote for me. I'd love to be doing it more for you. Yeah. My name is Sid Lamone, and first, thank you for coming tonight. I know we're all busy, and we have a million things going on, so the fact that you take time out of your night to come and learn more about the candidates that would be representing you and your family um, is very important, and I appreciate that. My journey on city council started uh, eight years ago when, um, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back even further. It started when my son, who's now 19, was six and in kindergarten at Valley View Elementary, and I had the opportunity to be PTA president. And I had such a good experience serving in that role and making a difference at the school that I thought, I wonder if I can do this in my community at the next level. And I just jumped in and ran for city council as a young mom and have thoroughly enjoyed my job ever since. There have definitely been challenges and rewards along the way. And I've, I've enjoyed it so much that I feel like I'm just getting started, even though I've been serving for two terms. And you might get me for another uh, 10 years, and it's up to you. You might get me for another 50. I don't know. I'm just going to keep serving as long as I feel I can make a difference in our community. But I absolutely love my job. Um, I've been here long enough um, to be able to know that government works slow and being able to figure out um, your, your roots and your kind of your experience and what you're doing on the council, um, it takes some time. And like I said, I feel like I'm just getting started. I've been with the council um, to see some major things happen in our city. The public safety building, uh, the road fee getting passed, our care tax to improve our parks and our uh, recreation programs. I've really been here through some major things that have happened and I'm, I'm grateful for that and that's been a privilege for me to be able to be part of those major decisions that hopefully will affect and continue to affect change in our community for many, many years to come. I know um, for my family, one reason I ran is because I want our three boys to make their home here um, when they get that time, when the time comes for them. And when I decided to run eight years ago, I'm gonna, I thought I'm going to do everything I can to make that possible. And some changes needed to happen in our city, and I've been very honored to be part of those changes. And I want to continue making a difference for not only my family, but yours as well. My name is Brent. My name is Brent Bullock. I'm running for the city council. I appreciate all of you. I've uh, been a resident of Pleasant Grove all of my life. Uh, my family uh, settled uh, way back when the fort was still existing. I uh, love Pleasant Grove, as, as Eric said, all of us feel that way. I uh, have a, a kind of a unique background as why I ended up running in this position is I Worked as a city judge for 28 years, retired in March 1st of this year. Thought I was going to run off and have a great time in retirement. And then I, I, I talked to some individuals who felt that maybe I had something to offer. I've been familiar with the and, and intricate working of the city for all of those years. Uh, and I feel that I have something that I can offer. Um, I have a master's degree in public administration, and, and which is, I think, a plus that I'd be able to understand the workings of the city. I've, I, I'm grateful for this opportunity. There's things that I think we need to do. We need to address, obviously, the issue with the roads, but I think there are other issues. And I'm grateful if I could have your support during that time. Thank you. Okay, well, 
Thanks for being here, everybody. Um, my name is Alex Carter. Um, you know, I, it, you're all, you all said it, right? We, we all love Pleasant Grove. I, I feel the same way. I grew up on 1100 North, right across from the Hammonds. So if, if Carrie knows something about me being a teenager, it's, it's long past. <laughs> but, um, it, you know, I, I love this area. And uh, I've, I've loved, uh, loved looking out into the crowd tonight. And I'm, I'm looking at all these familiar faces. Some of you I know by name. Some of you I don't. Um, some of you I've seen, uh, you know, at various different points in my life, and it, it's really awesome to be able to look out and have that connection to, uh, to the place where you love so much. Um, I am married to my sweetheart. Um, she grew up in Pleasant Grove as well, went to Manila Elementary, it's where my kids are going now, and uh, it's, it's a great area. You know, it, it, some people have asked, uh, asked me one time a while back, you know, have you considered putting your kids into private school? And, and I thought that that's kind of a silly question because... Um, the area that we're in with the people that are, that are serving as teachers and, and, and taking care of our kids, it's fantastic. Um, the, the people that are really putting in the effort in Pleasant Grove, I, I don't think they're doing it for the money. I think they're doing it because they love this area. And, and it makes you really want to get out there and do something uh, for, your, you know, for your community as well. And so, you know, along with other things in my, in my life, you know, trying to volunteer and serve where I can, I, I've decided to run for city council. And I think the biggest reason is is because I think I offer something a little bit unique. We have a, you, a great group of people at the, at the city right now um, with, the, with the mayor and the, and the council members that are currently there, all from unique backgrounds. And, and mine is unique as well. I'm a mechanic by trade. I'm a small business owner. I come with the mindset of, of really just solving problems and finding solutions and getting things done. I'm excited to put those, uh, those skills to work for, for Pleasant Grove, and uh, I hope you'll, uh, hope you'll give me your vote. Thank you. Thank you, candidates. So we'll move into the question portion now. And for candidates, when you're not answering, if you could just mute your microphones, and that way we can avoid some feedback. And then in order to get through as many of these questions as possible before 8 o'clock, I'm just going to ask the audience to please refrain from applause or other expressions so we can get through these questions. So we are starting this question with Dustin. If the road utility fee is invalidated in court, what is your next step to take care of the roads? I think we've got to take an opportunity um, to look at the growing revenues that we have as a city and, and whether that's calling it a tax versus a fee uh, and re-implementing it. Uh, if that's what the desire of the city is and, and the, the council, or whether it's taking the um, added revenues, to me that's the, the greatest source of, of new resources that we have, and being able to apply an appropriate portion of that to the, the improvements. I don't think there's anybody at this table or out uh, in the audience here that doesn't recognize that that's a high priority for the city. And so being able to take a look at what our, our growing resources are and being able to make a plan to, to allocate a, an appropriate portion of those new resources to address the, the needs of, of, our, of our roads and the infrastructure underneath the roads is really what we need to do. Thank you. Carrie? Oh, it's my turn. <laughs> I was thinking about what he said. Can you repeat the question, please? Certainly. If the road utility fee is invalidated in court, what is your next step to take care of the roads? So, what he said. <laughs> I think we're all going to have a similar answer. I think that, that we expected to see, and, and, and I think the current council and the council before them have done a lot of work to help to increase revenues coming into the city. Um, I also wonder if maybe some of those have fallen short, um, but I think there's a real need for prioritization. Um, we need to, to make roads a bigger priority. I think we've seen a lot of construction happening recently um, over the last year or two, um, and so I think progress is happening there. Um, but I'm not sure that it's enough. And I also think there, that maybe we need to also be looking at what's underneath those roads. What's underneath those roads that need to be addressed. And I think that there's a, a long history of stuff not being maintained properly. So I prioritization, look at where the revenue is, what do we have, what are our needs versus our wants, and get busy with it. 
Sí. Unfortunately, because of the lawsuit, <clears throat> um, we're at a standstill. We have about a million dollars waiting to be spent on our roads. It's been collected since last, uh, since last June of 2018, since the road fee was passed. Um, that's unfortunate because the residents came out and the majority said they want the roads fixed. So my plan would be to take this back to the ballot and let the residents vote again and continue to have them vote to fix their roads. And if they want the roads fixed, that's exactly what we do. And we'll continue to fight every lawsuit that comes before us, a frivolous lawsuit, because I don't think that when the people's voice is heard, that should be diminished. And that's exactly what's happening. On October 10th, we go to court to find out how we can, if we're going to win or not. And if we win, we're gonna start spending that money immediately that we've been collecting to go back into our roads. But it's unfortunate and it's disappointing that the people voted and then to have a group of individuals come and stall that process to fix our roads, um, it's not right. So I'll do everything I can to put this back on the ballot, uh, ballot, continue to spend money from our general fund and any other revenue that we have to go towards roads because we're already allocating that money. We're gonna continue to prioritize our infrastructure underneath the roads and do everything we can to get our roads fixed. It's, an, it's a long-term problem, but we've made progress, as you can see, from what's been happening this summer and, and in the summer's past. But three, over $3 million we will be able to allocate if the road fee um, is able to, to be one in court. We're gonna do everything we can to win that. As uh, Sid mentioned, it's unfortunate that the lawsuit occurred after the vote of the, the people. The concern I have is uh, if, if the court upholds uh, the objection to this fee, what then is the next step that the city needs to take? Uh, it would be wonderful if that doesn't happen, but as a city, uh, being, if I'm on the city council, I'd be concerned about what exactly we're going to do from there. One of the issues that I think we need to do is to look at uh, revenue sourcing as, as we face these, this dilemma. We, we got in this position with the roads specifically as a result of, of not sufficient retail businesses. And uh, we're at the point now where we can't really logically in, increase uh, uh, property taxes. So what we need to do is take a relook at, at some of these issues, specifically as it relates to those roads, and hopefully that we prevail in the, in the court, because if not, then we're going to have to go back and, and, and face some issues relative to resolving these issues. Thank you. Well, everything that's been said here is, uh, you know, kind of along the lines of, uh, you know, similar what I'm thinking. Um, obviously, if the, if, the, if the road fee, uh, I guess, gets overturned, and we've got to do something else, and we're going to have to look real, really uh, closely at it and, and figure out how we're going to fund roads. So the bigger question that I have here is, um, as, as a mechanic, the first thing I think in my mind is, well, how did we get to where the roads became such an emergency? Have you thought about that? Like, did we not, you know, 30 years ago, could, you know, could we have looked at this? Could we have done something a little bit different? Um, and uh, so we've got to deal with the problems that's at hand, right? You know, we've got to have a, have a look at it with, uh, um, you know, open minds. We've got to be able to come together and, uh, and solve the problem that's here at hand. And so um, I echo a lot of things that's been said here, you know, the economic growth, uh, the, the best of our ability, looking at how funds are, are being used now. Um, and, and all those things, it sounds great. And if, if the road fee stays, then we need to make sure that those funds are spent wisely to the best of uh, our ability. But then we've got to have a serious look at what's going to be our next emergency in 20 years. Let's look at it now. And let's, let's try to get, come to the table and, and see how we can get ourselves into a better situation so we're not having you know, issues where we're being challenged in court again. You know? So that would be, that'd be the, the look that I would have at that. Yeah, so... This is one of the tough questions for being on city council, is roads. Roads issue is never going to go away because of where we live. We started this discussion well over four years ago on the city council and discussing and having public hearings of what we need to do to better our community as far as roads go. And that's where we started going down the, the, the line of a road feed for our community. And that's when Prop 3 propped up. It came upon us. And, and that was about cutting services to our city. And we're a city of services. You know, we have nine departments in the city that we, that uh, public safety, safety, public works, parks, 
And that's why the citizens voted no on Prop 3. And, and that's why we went back and looked and said, how, how can we better um, do this? And then the road fee came about. We spend, we get about $1.3 million from our Class C road funds. We get another 500000 from the county. We get another, um, what is it, uh, I wrote down about 400000 from our general fund that we move over. We're up to about $2.1 million that is going towards our roads currently. And as you look around town, over three years, we've had over 20 different projects going on in our roads. We are sitting on $1.4 million on our road fee right now, currently. And that's how much we gather each year, $1.4 million. Think about that, but what that could be doing for our roads in Pleasant Grove. I hope it passes. I hope the judge sees the arguments and sees where we're coming from and allows us to do this road fee because we're not getting any more money from the state on our roads. Thanks. Thank you. So this next question, we will start first with Carrie and then work our way down as before. If you are elected, what are the three things you most hope to accomplish on city council? Um, I'm going to say number one is obviously roads. Okay, that you get the roads fixed. Everybody wants to hear get the roads fixed. I would like to see a day when we don't have to talk about roads anymore <laughs> because it's not a problem. They're fixed, they're maintained. We don't have to think about that anymore. It's a done deal and it's happening. Um, my number one concern is, is, also, is probably transparency. Um, I think that we, we need to have a lot more transparency. I, I also think that um, people shouldn't have to search for answers. They shouldn't have to ask for certain things. It should just be there. It should be available. Um, I'd like to see greater interactivity um, with the city council meetings. Not everybody can just fly off work and be there at the meeting and be present. Yeah, you can live stream it, but that takes time too. Um, maybe those things can be recorded. Maybe there's another way to be more interactive. We're in an electronic age. I think we should be using the technology to reach out to the people and get everybody's input all the time. So my first would be to continue our communication and transparency with the citizens. We began live streaming about five years ago and it's made a huge difference for the citizens, as Carrie said, who cannot attend our council meetings. They can go to our YouTube channel and look up exactly what's going on. Um, as far as communication, I've been proactive in reaching out to the citizens for the past eight years. That was my goal from day one, is to make sure you know exactly what's going on in your community and with your elected officials. You have a right to know. And I've made that a goal to communicate each and every day um, through social media with my constituents and make sure that you can contact me. I give my personal cell number out. I do everything I can to make sure I'm accessible to you because when we only have five council members and a mayor, you need to make sure that you can get a hold of us at any time. Second would be making sure that the funds that we do have, we use wisely. Our care tax funds, we're starting to rebuild our parks, programs at the rec center. We have a lot of new things coming with that care tax initiative. We need to make sure that every dollar is spent wisely because it's your money. And third, I would say wages for our employees. Um, we have some of the lowest paid employees, first responders in different departments in the city. We're a training ground for our first responders especially to come and get trained here. We spend thousands of dollars in time training them and they leave to go to other departments for a higher wage. We need to make sure we're doing everything we can to keep quality men and women here, not just in our first um, responder departments, but also in every area of the city. We want good quality people. We have them, but we want to keep them. First thing that obviously has been said here is that I would want to address the issue of the roads because that's an issue that seems to be a hot matter with most of the people here and I think part of it is as we ride on some of those roads and wonder uh, if we're on, we need to go back and get a four-wheeler to uh, get through some of those roads. Uh, the second thing that I would do is the issue relative to the wants and needs of our citizens. Um, I would propose that we have a uh, set out a survey to find out what exactly the citizens want and, and then decide whether or not what are our priorities. 
I agree with Sid that the third thing that I would do is to do something about salaries. Having worked for the city for many, many years, I've seen many people come and go, and, and it's always the issue about, about wages. I look at my clerks, and they're the lowest paid clerks in, I think, uh, the United States, and, and it, it's an issue that we need to address to make sure that we keep quality people here. There we go. Couldn't get the green light. Um, a lot of great things being said there, and I, I, I echo uh, like those ideas. A uh, couple of things that, that, that I would like to see happen is, first, keep the progress that's been going. You know, there's been a lot of great things happening. You know, uh, some of the people on the, on the council right now and in uh, our mayor, they, they got bombarded with a bunch of really hard, difficult problems. Um, that really started years ago before they ever came on, and I applaud the progress that's been made there. I wanted to want to make sure that that keeps happening. But uh, beyond that, we need to have a plan for the future. And I kind of touched on this already, but we could we could definitely do a little bit better to to look forward, you know, 20, 30 years down the road, and start to decide, okay, what's going to be the next emergency? What's going to be the next thing that we need to that we need to plan for? And we start looking at funds and maybe talk about earmarking certain funds for certain things. Um, and, and, you know, I'm not talking about stockpiling hundreds of millions of dollars, I don't think that's possible, but we could have some money set away that could make a dent in it. You know, the public safety building might need some renovations in a, in a, a couple of decades. Let's start thinking about it. Let's, let's, let's plan for that and not have an emergency um, that, uh, that has to, that to come up because those, those are difficult. It, it, it divides people. Um, and uh, I, I'm sorry, I can keep talking on and on about that, but uh, that the biggest thing is to be able to bring unity and being, uh, be able to come together and work together. Um, everybody wants the same things. You know, both sides of the road argument wants roads fixed, but we have different ideas on how to do it. So bring unity. So some wonderful answers, and I'm just going to kind of sit on top of that and say where we're at tonight, doTERRA, we're sitting right in the middle of our economic development and the growth that's going on out here in the growth. We have to be smart about what we're putting out here for the future of our kids. Smart development is what I want to key on and focus on. I'm done with high density, right? We need to focus on what's important for our city is a smart development for our city. Next one, we did a survey a few years ago, and a lot of the issues that came up was quality of life issues. Um, are we using our initiative, our care initiative, wisely? You know, you've seen uh, Discovery Park. You've seen our downtown park. Uh, we're spending money in our arts and other areas. I want to maintain that and continue that and, and spend it wisely. I mean, next year we're going to be putting in some pickleball courts. A lot of people love pickleball courts. And so that's where we're moving with that. But are we doing it wisely? And then last one, I think it's already touched on, was our wage study for our employees. We're a city of services. And who takes care of the services? It's our employees. And we have to be wise about wanting to keep them, train them, and wanting them to stay and providing the right environment for them to stay. And that's why the, your current council has proposed the wage study to see where we're, where we're missing on, on some of these issues. Thanks. For me, the first thing that I would, would do is, is really more for me in an effort to, to help uh, the city is is delve into the the budget. I've talked about this with a number of the citizens out there at the table and, and identify what my background comes from financial analysis and, and uh, forecasting and budgeting, uh, prioritizing as, as Carrie's talked about, uh, the use of the funds. And so for me, that would be priority number one for me is to really delve into uh, the budget that we have. And, and then I think I'll be in a better position to identify uh, and recommend uh, what, what the next steps are. Uh, second, I think, uh, I've talked to citizens about this before, uh, I think our community in the past has held um, kind of open meetings, and I, and I think whether it's through social media, like Sid has done a fantastic job of doing, or surveys that have been mentioned, uh, the thought I've had is maybe even hosting a, a community night, uh, whether that be on a quarterly or semi-annual basis, just making myself available to have community come in and uh, share their concerns, just have an open mic time, if we can call it that, no karaoke, but something that, that would give the citizens an opportunity to, to express their concerns that I could then take back to uh, the city council, to the city administration and express that. Since I've got a 15 minute, uh, second sign, my third, would just be what I tell my kids I want for Christmas every year. My wife's gonna last, laugh, peace on earth, goodwill towards men. 
All right, this next question, we'll start with Sid. What have you done to serve in our community outside of any paid positions you have held? Well, I'm gonna look straight ahead in the audience at Carrie Fox, who she and her husband started Follow the Flag. And that's been going, I believe, five years strong. It'll be the sixth year this July. That's how we can serve. You find a way to get involved. You serve on a committee. You do anything you can to come down. I also see Stacy Martino out there. She and Emily Var I mean, I can name, there's like a dozen people in this audience that have served and volunteered their time to make our community better for our families. Um, from the Heritage Festival to the flag to our historical committee. It's, it's amazing what our volunteers can do. And I would say just start small. If it's in your local school, if it's serving on a board or commission, um, we have everything from that you can give out yard of the month to um, serving on the heritage committee. I mean, there's so many things you can do, and I'm happy to help you find that right fit so you can feel like you're doing something in our community because it is so important. And as I said in my opening statement, that's how I got started by serving on the PTA. I think I was membership to start out with, and it wasn't a big role, and probably if it didn't get done, nobody would notice, but I took my job seriously, and that led me to where I am today from serving in the school to here on city council, making big decisions on behalf of your family and mine. Um, I think just start, just start some, it, an hour a month. Just make a goal to do something and you'll see that grow and you'll see the love of your community grow as well. Could I have, could you repeat yes. the question again? What have you done to serve in our community outside of any paid positions you've held? Um, many, many years ago, um, I served, uh, and this is going to date me, on the Auxiliary Police Department. Uh, we, uh, we were a reserve police officer. We ran the ambulance during that period of time. Um, ended up uh, getting hired on as a result of that. Um, I uh, served on the library board for uh, two uh, terms and was uh, on the library board at the time when we came up with the design and ultimate construction of the library that we now all enjoy. Uh, I served uh, as a, on the board of directors of the Pleasant Grove Irrigation Company, <coughs> later on represented them as an attorney, and I didn't get paid, by the way. Uh, and I, uh, but I, it, it, for me, um, if I love the city, I should be willing to to serve in, in, in any capacity, and it's been a real privilege for me. Thank you. Well, there's a lot of, a lot of different things in my life where I, uh, you know, certainly uh, I've enjoyed service and, and volunteering. Um, some of the big things would be with, uh, with, the, with the youth in the neighborhood, uh, with different scout assignments, uh, things like that. And the, the, I'll just say one thing about this city is, you know, um, there's been some fantastic eagle projects that have happened um, that uh, that our, our community or my neighborhood has been involved with and um, there was some help there from the city uh, to be able to get those things done and it's a fantastic thing. I think Sid nailed it with uh, with you know kind of asking us all to dig deep and try to do a little better. I know I could um, in, in certain in certain areas but um, the volunteering in in this area is fantastic with uh, with all the things that people are willing to do um, and, uh, and be able to get involved there. Uh, my uh, my my goals would be to continue to encourage that. You know, I've had a lot of uh, a lot of great experiences volunteering at the kids' schools um, and certain things around uh, you know cleanup projects, things like that, and just the small stuff with really no title. Um, and I think that's where I think that's where you really you know, get things done is who you know those people just kind of grassroots coming together. And uh, I would continue to encourage our city to do that, uh, our, our our people in our city to look towards. Uh, uh, the parks and rec, uh, you know, people in the city to be able to find projects, things that need to get done, and uh, it's a fantastic thing for our city to get involved and, and help each other out. I, I love this question because it talks about being a volunteer in our community. Some of my greatest experiences I look back on was serving as my neighborhood chair in Little Denmark, walking my hood, my neighborhood, and getting to know the people that live in every house and know what makes them tick. Um, my time on the downtown advisory board, getting to know the business owners in our downtown, wonderful experiences to know what, what keeps them up at night, you know, doing a business, a small business. 
And then time on, uh, on the Planning Commission. It was a wonderful experience to not only work with developers, landowners, and residents, also to see if their concerns and what they can bring to the table. And it really is about volunteering. And as I look back, some of the greatest experiences have been because I volunteered. I reached out and outside my circle and met new people and understood what, what really they thought a community was about. And so that's why I love volunteer work. So when we moved to Pleasant Grove about uh, 12 years ago, I, I uh, initially joined the library board. Uh, and uh, Brent, did, did they have tablets when you were on the library board, or were they actually books? <laughs> just, just kidding. Uh, so yeah, two full terms on the library board. Uh, then I moved to the Board of Adjustments, uh, and then now on the Planning Commission uh, as well. So 10 plus years of, of dedication, and, and that's, I think, where you really get to see where someone's heart uh, is uh, in their opportunity and willingness to serve. Uh, the other thing I would say is, Alex, you've got a neighbor named Josh Sandberg that calls me coach. Um, I've, I've coached hundreds of youth, your children, your neighbor's children. Uh, I, I was mentioning to somebody here tonight uh, that there are more kids that are seniors in high school that know me as Coach Phillips that probably know the principal. Um, I've been able to serve countless hours in that capacity giving to the city. I've topped strawberries, I've filled sandbags, I've done all the different things that, that uh, our community is built on. And, and I think that's why, you know, Eric's mentioned we are a community of services. Those services don't happen without people who are willing to get out there. And we can all complain, we all take opportunity to complain, but when you take the time to serve and to give of yourself, it takes the place of the complaining we actually get things done. Okay, well, <clears throat> for the sake of transparency, I'm going to give myself a big fat zero on this one. <laughs> Most of my volunteer work, and I have a long list of it, um, has been through my professional capacity, so not necessarily with the city of Pleasant Grove. Um, I work in healthcare. I have volunteered with the American Heart Association to teach um, CPR skills to people. Um, I've worked with the... Uh, Friends for Sight organization, where we go into schools and um, do eye exams for the children in the elementary schools, um, because there are issues out there that if you catch them early and treat them early, they can be overcome. Um, I've worked with senior citizens to test for glaucoma and blood pressure and cholesterol testing. I've worked with the Utah Farm Bureau to do health screens for the Farmers, when they come together for their annual conventions. Um, and so most of mine has been in my professional capacity in volunteering my expertise to members in the community, not necessarily confined to Pleasant Grove, but wherever those things are, happen to be needed. Um, I have sat with people who are dying and helped them to leave this world um, just because I had time and I cared to go do that. Um, Thank you, Carrie. Clean the church, blood donations, you know. Mayor Reese, can I break do. protocol real quick okay. here? I, this is something that I tend to do from time to time, but that is absolutely not a big fat zero. That is wonderful <laughs> stuff, Carrie, and I hope you don't feel intimidated by, by that at all. Well, well, but that's <laughs> tremendous service, and I don't want you to feel that way at all. Okay, moving on to the next question, we're going to start with Brent. Our city departments are woefully understaffed, yet using funds to hire more employees might be considered an unpopular move. Do you have any ideas for tackling this difficult situation? Well, one of the things that I think, um, we've done a number of these studies, as, uh, I've, I think I've seen about nine of them since I've been here uh, when I was working for the city and, and of those nine uh, studies uh, I think there was only one time where they ever increased any of the salary because we've always been fighting this issue of not enough monies and so I think the decision on the city council is 
where are the priorities? These city workers uh, are, are working at salaries that in, in any other areas would uh, qualify them for federal assistance for some of those people. And yet we seem to be able to ignore that issue because there's always somebody to fill that position. Uh, and so the city's always taken the position. My position would be, quite frankly, is that we need to address that just there at the same way we do with the roads, and we need to do it. And we need to increase these salaries for these folks. Well, this is a, you know, it, it kind of touches home. You know, I, I, a couple months back, might have been a year now, I had to use uh, non-emergency dispatch, and, and, and lo and behold, the person who picked up the, the phone to, to take care of my issue was my neighbor who lives right behind this. And, um, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing to, to, to think about, and it, yeah, I guess it probably deserves more light to be shown on it. Um, there are some issues there. You know, the people that are, that are serving our community, who live in our community, um, they need to be taken care of. They need to have uh, their, their needs met. They need to have the tools to be able to accomplish the job that they, they have at hand. And this is, is exactly right. It's, it's going to be a touchy thing to, to be able to figure out what to do. I've looked through the budget. Um, you know, I, I, I've gone through there, and, you know, the, the truth is that a lot of these services, the, the things in our city are being ran extremely well with the budget that they have. And it, it hats off to them for what they're doing uh, with uh, with the money that they have, we need to we need to look at this and how we can get their needs met. Um, I, I don't have the perfect answer on this. I'm not sure anybody does. It'd be great to have millions of dollars to be able to throw at it, but um, that's going to be tough to get. But we can look through the budget. We can we can look at what the needs are, and we can we can make sure that our city employees are getting taken care of. We got to be able to retain the good people, and so that they don't leave. Um, we want to keep them here. We want them to be able to serve uh, you know serve our citizens well. So it's definitely something that needs to need to have great attention. So, uh, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, it is, we're a city of services, and our employees provide that quality of service. And this is one of the tough decisions you have to make on city council, is finding that money. Recently, we had three firefighters that left for other cities because they found more money. We had a couple of police officers that found um, new jobs in other cities because they got paid more money. And it's, it's real life. We have to be able to find the money to, to, to up the game in Pleasant Grove because it's starting to hurt us. We go through and we spend a lot of money to train these employees, whether it's dispatch, fire, police, public works, uh, you name it. And it hurts after two or three years, we see that those employees leave for greener pastures. Now, sometimes those pastures are not greener and they come back. We need to be able to provide a, a working environment that they're happy with, but they're also getting paid a fair wage. And that's why we're doing the wage study. Our last wage study we did, we brought a lot of people up to mid midpoint, and, and I think it was a, a tremendous help to our city. But we can always do more, and that's one of the tough decisions that you have to face on city council, is working through the budget. When you, when you step into this job on day one, January 1st, you get handed the budget and say, make nine departments work, and that's what it's about being on city council. So my degree is in economics, um, and what I learned very early on in, in that uh, program was that the this economics is the study of allocating uh, uh, limited resources to satisfy unlimited wants. There's just not enough money to go around to do everything that we all want. And so exactly what's been said here is you have to be able to identify um, what you have to work with and how to, how to best do it. Uh, one thing that I feel strongly about, though, is from my perspective in, in the, the business world uh, and financial uh, understanding of finances in working with businesses that are out in the private sector is that turnover is way more costly than, than paying somebody a little bit of a higher wage to retain them. Now, certainly you don't want to throw money away haphazardly, but in, in making the wise decision, we have key people that... that we want to be highly skilled and highly trained and highly effective in what they do, and we need to be able to retain them. We are in a competitive environment. The labor statistics that just came out recently show that we've just hit historically low unemployment numbers, and, and that means everybody who's looking for people to work 
can't find them at the cost that they need, so they're looking for our employees. We need to be competitive in that environment so that they stay, so that we minimize that cost of turnover. Um, hurrah for the city employees, by the way. Um, so wages for city employees. City employees um, are what keeps us all running, right? Um, when something breaks down in the middle of the night, you've got somebody you can call. When you have an emergency, you have somebody you can call. Um, city employees need to be compensated fairly um, and earn a living wage. Um, but I also think that they need to have the equipment, facilities, resources, and technologies that are required for them to be able to do their jobs well um, and work in an environment um, that, frankly, encourages them to come to work every day. Um, and I think that those are things also that weigh into um, the job quality factors. People will work for less, not that I'm asking them to, but people will work for less when they can work in an environment that is happy and cohesive and where they have the proper tools and facilities with which to work and do their jobs well um, so that they can be their best. So I think, I think it's a whole package, not just about the money, but also about the quality of the job. So my first priority as a council member is to make sure our city employees are safe on the job, whether it's our first responders, parks, recreation employees, and that they have the tools and resources to do their job effectively. They run a lean budget and they know every dollar that they spend because they know that they might not get that dollar the next year depending on the needs of our budget. And I've been in those budget meetings for eight years where the department heads come and express not their wants but their needs and we can't always fulfill what they need to efficiently run their department. And we're gonna do everything, continue to do everything we can to make sure that that, that, that happens. Most importantly is, is their wages. And to, as, as Brent said, when they are at a level that um, they need to be on federal assistance, and this isn't everyone, but we have employees working two or three jobs to make ends meet, that's not right. And we do everything we can to prioritize our budget and continue finding those monies available um, for the employees that we have in our city. You can see that we have a tough job. Communication, care tax, economic development, budget, wages. It's a tough job. Um, but I'm up for the task and I want to continue serving to make uh, these things happen in our community. Uh, lastly, I'm going to ask for your help in creating a culture of appreciation for our employees. If they're out in front of your house fixing a sewer line or you see them at the rec center at the front desk or a first responder comes on a call to your home, just a thank you. Nothing out of your pocket as far as money, nothing you know, that is going to take a lot of time out of your day, but just a thank you to them would go a long way. All right, this will be the last question and we will start with Alex. Are you open to variances in zoning for livestock animals based on type of animals, placement of animals on the property, and taking into consideration neighbors and their agreement? Yeah, I mean, this is, I guess, you look at Pleasant Grove, I guess, the first thing that comes to my mind is um, there's a lot, of different, a lot of different areas in Pleasant Grove. First, the small area that we're in, you've got a lot of different zones and a lot of different uh, people from different ways of life. And so variances are, are to me, on a should be taken on a case-by-case -case basis, right? I mean, am I open to it? Yeah. Um, but let's, let's really study the issue. Let's talk about it, and let's, uh, let's figure out exactly what, what really the needs are and, and the impact on it. Um, I think that variances should be uh, the exception, not the rule, uh, but uh, it's something that we definitely need to, need to look at, for sure. Uh, you can't do things... Um, on a whim, so really studying them out, uh, I think, is going to be key. And of course, you're going to have all the people that uh, um, need to look at this, the planning commission, of course, and, and, and go through all the proper steps. But yeah, de definitely the exception, not the rule. So, so this is a fun one, right? Uh, this is something that would probably never come before a city council or planning commission. This would typically uh, come before a land use officer. And on a case case by case basis, uh, you know, do you want to add extra horse, cow, chickens? I mean, this is something that'd be reviewed by that that officer. And I would hope that that officer would take into account the the surrounding neighborhoods, the the issues, why this this uh, resident would want this variance, 
typically when variances are usually not granted unless unless it's a special case and they can prove it and so again it comes down to our land use officer and so probably probably one of the easiest questions tonight is is we get to defer to that that officer and let him make that decision now we do get questions you know when uh, certain developments come into the city you know uh, someone's farm is getting surrounded because that's what we have left now is a lot of infill development in our city is do they get to keep their animal rights and the answer is typically yes they do so. For the last two and a half years, if, I, if I've had the opportunity to serve on the Planning Commission, you do see opportunities for various uh, requests uh, for variances. Um, and the answer obviously is yes, we're open to considering things on a case-by-case -case basis, as Alex said. I think I'm happy, in fact, I tell my kids this, they can tell me anything, they can ask me anything, at least I hope they feel comfortable to do it. And then we can have an open discussion and, and discuss the issue and be able to have a conversation between people and, and come to a conclusion that we hope is fair to all involved. I've been involved in, in uh, Rotary for a number of years uh, over my career and one of their tenants is, is it fair to all concerned? Uh, that would be something you'd want to take in, into consideration. Talk about the community that, that's surrounding the, the home, the impact, the needs of the individual requesting the variance, but certainly being willing to listen, being willing to hear the concerns uh, of all involved and, and do what's right for the community as a whole. Well, I keep nine chickens, so what's that tell you? <laughs> um, within walking distance of my house, there are peacocks and horses and goats and llamas and chickens and uh, quite a number of neighborhood dogs and cats. Um, I love them all. <laughs> um, we have uh, areas that are R18. If you don't know what that is, it's just housing, basically. Um, we have commercial, we have professional office, and we have areas where they're keeping livestock. Oh, there's cows too. Did I mention the cows? Um, and I think there's room for all of it. And, and I think that there are good ways to achieve a cohesive environment for everybody to be able to do what they want um, when we respect each other's boundaries, right? Um, and, and we have municipal codes that address a lot of those things and how those properties need and should be maintained and how those animals need and should be maintained. Um, and that's what keeps things peaceable. Um, so I have no problem with livestock variances when they're properly maintained. I, I, think, I actually think it's great for the community. It's great for the people who live here, who work here. It's great when you take your evening stroll to see all these things all in one great place. So, yeah. So our code, code and ordinances are pretty black and white and define what the uses are in our community and the zone and the different neighborhoods that we live in. And it's a balance in those codes, codes and ordinances between private property rights and respecting the neighbors that live by you. And we try um, really hard to make sure that we're enforcing those appropriately. But I think we're always open to hear if there should be a variance or any other change or amendment to the code. We're a 169 year old city. There's some things that might need to be updated and we're always open to, to hearing that and seeing if there's some changes that can be made that would bring us up to date with uh, needs in the community at this time. So completely open to hearing um, a community members concern or something that they want to do to their property and then abiding by the code or looking at changes to our code if we need to accommodate, uh, accommodate their needs. <laughs> I would uh, defer to the individual who has the responsibility to make a determination as to whether it meets the code requirement. Many, many years ago, I was on what was called the Manila Planning Commission, which w was, we were charged with uh, the Manila area with 1100 North, uh, north to, to annex into Pleasant Grove. The number one issue of everybody at that time was animal rights. Uh, uh, that's not changed. That's not changed. They just got smaller animals. Uh, the, the, the issue, if, if they request a variance, you, 
you look at the code, you see if it meets there, and then you send out notice to the surrounding residents to see if there's any objection, and then you make uh, the best uh, decision you possibly can. And I would leave that to that. Thank you. So we will move now to closing statements and we'll shake things up a bit and start from Alex and work our way down this way. And each candidate will have two minutes. Well, thanks everybody for being here tonight. Um, it's, been, uh, it's been awesome to be able to, to hear some of the answers from the, the candidates that we have here. Uh, I, I think we're, you've, got, you've got a great problem. You've got six great people up here. Um, who, uh, who have a desire to serve and, uh, and really want the best for the city. So um, it's, uh, it's, it's awesome to see um, that there's, there's people here with, uh, with their hearts in the right place. I hope you'll consider me as, as a possible option for one of these seats. Um, I think that I bring a unique perspective to the table, um, being the background that I have, being a small business owner and a mechanic, um, being able to look at things just a, just a little bit differently. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, I deal with problems um, with people that are unhappy, um, and, and my job is to, is to diagnose the problem, find the solution, and just get it handled. Um, and, and be able to talk to people and, and, and have, a, have a civil discussion when they're upset and, and uh, there's problems. They don't like that their cars broke down, and they don't like that the parts are a couple days out. We do the best that we can, keep the peace, and work with the people who are, who are doing their jobs around me. I can't, do, I can't fix cars without parts. We can't um, you know, it do a lot of things without the people around us. So in, in my position as a, as a council member, I would, I would approach it in some of the uh, similar ways uh, to be able to just take the issues at hand, find, uh, find solutions, work together, and get them solved. And uh, I, I, think that, uh, I think that with a uh, with good group of people that we have currently serving in the city, I, my, uh, my background would, would fit in well. And uh, I would, I'd love to, love to reach out to any of you or, or have you reach out to me if you've got any questions. There's plenty of ways to get a hold of me. I'd love to answer them. You can call me. You can text me anytime. And uh, I appreciate you being here. Looking forward to serve. Thank you. Brent. Uh, as he said, I'm, I appreciate all of you folks coming here. My final statement as it relates to this is that I appreciate the opportunity to run on the city council. I admire mayors who have served and given their time and talent to uh, look at the city councils all of these many years that I've worked for the city. These are a, a, a difficult position to be in. I said to somebody the other day, it's much easier to be the judge. You just order them. If they don't like it, then you tell them that's too bad. <laughs> this is a, an opportunity uh, for me to, to step out of my role as a judge and to listen to individuals and to be able to make the best decision I possibly can. And I believe that with my background, and I, I'm going to use something none of these have done, my maturity, that uh, that I hope that I would make wise decisions to, to help this city grow. Uh, we are in desperate needs of many, many things, and we can't make everybody happy. But I would hope that a week I could do the best job that I possibly can. Thank you. So when I... <clears throat> do something, I give 110%. And since my first day in office, I've, I feel like I've given 110%. I apologize to those I may have responded to a text, phone call, or email at 2 in the morning. I'm a night owl, so I stay up and I want to make sure that I'm um, open and accessible, but to the detriment of my phone going off. Um, apologies to my husband and those who like, because I do have contact at 2 in the morning. Um, because I want, I'm, I'm not anxious like to answer your question and to get back to you that that's just kind of like my, my MO. Um, but from day one, I've, I've wanted to, to do this job right. Like I said, I'm not done. There's so much more I want to accomplish in our city and there's so much more, more I want to get done, not just for my family, but yours. I want to continue being hopefully a community example and leader, um, letting other people know that this is an important role in our city. I want to continue volunteering and serving and it's been a privilege and honor to serve on the council up to this point. 
um, starting with Mayor Fugel and the other council members and our current staff right now. Um, like I said, has been a privilege for me, and I hope that you would continue to give me that opportunity to serve you uh, because it's something I truly enjoy. Um, there's been some challenges along the way, as I mentioned earlier, and um, but with those challenges comes a lot of rewards. And when we see the new Discovery Park get built, when we see a new downtown park, when we see our roads getting fixed, our first responders getting a new and safe building to do their job, um, that is the payoff for me. And I'm going to continue to work hard, if elected, to do everything I can to make sure this community is safe and a good quality of life and fun in a place that you are all proud to call home because I know I have um, for the past 40 years. And living at the base of the G Mountain and Mount Timpanogos, um, I truly believe that we, mo we live in the most beautiful city in Utah, quite possibly, I'm even gonna go dare say the world, um, but it truly is a beautiful place to live. Okay, well, um... I'm anxious to help serve Pleasant Grove City in the capacity of city council person. Um, I hope to be able to help accomplish all of the big talking points that we've had on the table for years now. <laughs> um, water, roads, city services, um, city employees, transparency. Um, I think we have a very diverse population here, and it's getting more and more so, which is wonderful. Um, I work in healthcare, so I'm used to dealing with regulatory compliance. I've spent a lot of years in education where I've also dealt with regulatory compliance. Um, so I'm pretty well schooled on how to look up the rules, how to find the rules, how to go after it if you don't like the rules. <laughs> um, and I'm and I'm looking forward to hopefully being able to serve um, as your city council person um, and help to just continue to make Pleasant Grove the most pleasant place to live. So I'm asking for your vote. I'm Carrie Hammond. Vote for me. We do live in a great community. Uh, it's an opportunity to be with neighbors, with friends. Uh, I've lived in three different neighborhoods in Pleasant Grove over the, the 12 years that we've been here and see neighbors and friends from, from each of those here tonight. Uh, you have the opportunity to determine which of us uh, has the opportunity to serve on the city council, but you don't get to control whether I get to serve in the community. Um, I'll continue to coach. I'll continue to volunteer uh, one way or the other because this is a great place to be. One thing that I would ask you to do is is the voter turnout uh, for this last election, the, the primary election, was 27% of registered voters. That means that, I mean, I don't know what the registered percentage is, but the reality is there were a lot of people that, that didn't vote. So the voice of, of who's got a chance to, to win this election and serve on the city council is being represented by a very, very small voice of our community. Encourage your, your neighbors to, to become registered. Uh, and then if they are registered, to actually vote. Because I would love to see uh, what our community has to say if everybody gave their voice. I mentioned before that I've lived overseas. I've, I've lived on three different com continents in my life. Um, not count, well, yeah, not counting uh, North America, so four continents. We have a tremendous privilege. We have a tremendous opportunity to give our voice and to feel the freedom to express what we what we feel to be right, who we want to represent us. And you have that opportunity now. You obviously, by being here, are saying that you're the ones that do vote, that do care. Ask your neighbors to. Ask your neighbors to come out. And let's get all of our uh, constituency to register and to vote. And I'd love to see who you ask. Because as Alex said, there's some tremendous people and some tremendous talent. And in spite of uh, my gray hair, I want to be there and, and continue to serve. So thank you. Thank you for coming out tonight and believing in our community. It's an honor to serve on the city council. I try to give 110% because I love this community. It's been mentioned before, we've had many great things happen in our community. Discovery Park, Downtown Park, our new public safety buildings. Roads are being worked on. Quality of life is being improved. 
probably one of the biggest testaments to me today was I was at City Center. And a new couple had just moved into Pleasant Grove. And so I had to ask them, why did you move into Pleasant Grove? And they said, because your community, the events that you hold, the wonderful downtown park, Discovery Park, your quality of life, just so many things are going on in your city, we want to be part of it. And it made me take a step back, you know, because I had the opportunity to talk to them about each of those pro projects that I was able to be involved in. It's a way to give back to the community, to listen to you. One of the greatest moments I have is when I get an email from you, a text, a call, because I'm able to talk with you, come to your house, meet with you, and discuss the issues that are, are before us as, as residents. It means a lot to me. I want our city to continue to move forward. We have great development happening in our city. We've had over 36% sales tax increase, which is gonna help us offset a lot of our costs in our city. It'll help us tremendously. And that's why I serve, because I love Pleasant Grove and I love getting things done. So vote for Eric Jensen. Thanks. Thank you, candidates. So to everyone here, I would just say I speak from experience when I tell you that being on this side of the table is challenging and campaigning is hard work. And I'm always impressed with anybody who is willing to go through this process, raise their hand and step forward and say, I know that there are challenges that we have ahead of us and I'm willing to, to put forth my best effort to tackle those problems. So please join me in giving everyone a round of applause. Thank you for coming out tonight. I'm sure the candidates are willing to answer any additional questions or share contact information throughout the rest of this election season. Thank you.